Good morning, everyone. We all share in the grief of the tragic events that occurred in Israel on the most joyous day of the year, Simcha Torah. It's the only holiday that has the word Simcha, which means happiness and joy in it. And it turned into the saddest day in modern history of the Jewish state of Israel. The cruelty, the barbarism, the savagery that we witnessed is unprecedented in the annals of terrorism. The only thing it could be compared to that we've witnessed in our lifetime is the 9-11 attacks, but the numbers are far more staggering in proportion to the state of Israel. The first and foremost thing we have to do is demand that every single country in the world stand together and demand the immediate release of the 130 plus hostages, men, women, children, grandmothers, small infants, two-year-old children, pregnant women. That is the first line of attack that we have to demand that there will be no cessation of the attack on Hamas until they return every one of those Jewish civilians and military officers that they have abducted. Secondly, we as a Jewish community worldwide have to stand together shoulder to shoulder, not only with each other, despite affiliation, regardless of, we have to show unprecedented unity, but not only with us as a Jewish people, but with every single denomination of civilized human beings on the face of the earth who will stand together with Israel and the Jewish people against the savagery and terrorism. Number three is that we as a Jewish community have to raise funds to support the bereaved families, the injured families, the first responders. The needs in Israel are going to be monumental and we have to be ready to support our brothers and sisters. And of course, as Jews, we have to put our faith in God and pray, attend your synagogues, prayer services like never before and pray for our brethren in Israel for their safety, for their security. We have to raise our voices loud and clear in a united voice and stand together and let the world never forget what happened so that they will understand why our response is and will be what it will be which will be the complete dismantling and eradication of Hamas. Until Hamas no longer exists on the face of the earth, there can be no freedom, not for Israel, not for the Palestinian people, and not for any entity around the world. When the heart is attacked, it affects every limb of the body. Nowhere in the world can there be safety and security when this form of evil and barbarism can be allowed to continue. And of course, we have to deal with Iran, which is clearly the instigator and the one who facilitates this kind of terrorism around the world. Our hearts are broken to see these images, but we as good people of conscience, of morality, Jews and non-Jews alike, must defeat this evil from the, our midst and from the world at large. This week we begin reading the first Torah portion of the entire Torah, which is Bereshit. And it begins with a beautiful story, creation, God made the heaven and the earth, the sun and the moon, the light, the vegetation, the animals, the plants, mankind. But at the very end of this week's Torah portion, in the same Torah portion that we read about creation, we read about the evil that erupted on the face of the earth. The Torah says that God sees that the ways of man are evil and destructive and God regrets creating the world and the very week that he created it. And then the flood comes and God floods the world and destroys those evildoers. And believe it or not, the word that the Torah uses to describe the corruption and the evil that was prevalent in the time of the flood was the Torah says, Vatimalei Haaretz Hamas. The world was filled with Hamas, and the word Hamas in Hebrew means violence and evil and corruption. And here this organization raises their banner with the name of Hamas. Israel has tried everything to make peace with its neighbors, 
as Golda Meir famously said, if the Arab enemies of Israel put down their ammunition, there would be peace in the Middle East today. But if Israel put down their ammunition, there would be no Israel in the Middle East. We learned from the Holocaust. My grandparents were Holocaust survivors. They survived Auschwitz. For the first time in my life, I understand a taste, a drop of what the Holocaust was. The indiscriminate murder of men, women, and children by barbaric, inhumane animals. And I understand the suffering, just a drop of the trauma that they experienced in their lifetime. But just like my grandparents went on to rebuild their families, and just like the Jewish people went on to build the land of Israel, we will go on to build even better and even stronger. I was just in touch with my son Uziel, who went for the holiday of Sukkot to Jerusalem to celebrate Sukkot. And he and his friends and family members who are there went out and purchased a thousand miniature books of Tanya, which is a Kabbalistic Hasidic book full of divine guidance and inspiration and protection. And they sat up all night writing personal handwritten notes to the soldiers. And they're going around the streets, passing out these books for the soldiers to put in their pockets as a symbol of divine protection, of love, of strength, of unity, of inspiration. Everyone in our own way must find a way to communicate the love and the strength and the unity of the Jewish people. My brother, my younger brother Dovi, got married on 9-11-2001. And I remember how we all felt traumatized by the events. And he was considering postponing his wedding because who wants to get married on Tuesday night, 9-11, in Brooklyn, right over the bridge where the towers are burning. But he was instructed by his rabbis that what these terrorists did was evil and hatred. And what he's going to do by getting married is love and goodness. And therefore, the best way to defeat evil and hatred is with more love and more goodness. We cannot allow our enemies to have a victory over us by defeating our morale and our spirit and our faith in God and our faith in the goodness of humanity. We cannot allow Hamas to destroy our way of life, not just as Jews, but as Americans, as free people. We must rally together, unite as one. and. With God's help, we will prevail over this enemy as we have over every single enemy in Jewish history. Praying for the peace of our brothers and sisters and the healing and the comfort of our nation. Hope to see you in shul and pray together with you for the security and the safety of Israel.